Hello ladies and gentlemen and welcome to Anime Theory, where we're totally a normal human and not a parasite trying to disguise itself. Anyways, I'm not suspicious, let's move on. This theory will contain spoilers for Parasite. If you haven't watched it and you'd like to do so before watching, that's fine, I just felt a warning would be a good idea. So, as per the usual with pretty much everything I cover on this show, I was a pretty late arrival to the show. I mean, heck, I'm just getting through Code Geass as well right now, so this is pretty much normal by this point. And as I expected, I ended up enjoying the show quite a bit. By far, the most interesting aspect of the show, however, was the entities that embody the name of the show. Of course, I'm talking about the Parasites. I mean, without them, the show would just be some awkward romance story, though thinking about it, I'd probably still watch that. As I watched through, however, I began to realize something rather odd. We don't know much about the Parasites at all. Though a majority of the show focuses on these bizarre creatures, we actually get very little information on them in general. And so, as the anime theory guy, I figured it was my duty to figure this out for myself. I intend on explaining the unexplained mysteries of these creepy creatures. Sit tight and watch out for potential parasites, because we're digging into this series to find out the truth about the parasites. Let's start it up! So, first things first. We need to answer the biggest question that the series never answers. What even are the parasites? Where the heck did these guys come from? I mean, it's not like these things have been around for a while or something. So, now you may be wondering, could they have potentially come from space? The design is certainly bizarre, and what the parasites can do certainly doesn't seem like anything that a creature on Earth could do. So it must be aliens, right? Well, actually, no, they're not. No, I'm serious. While answering fan mail, the author of the original manga, Hitoshi Iwaki, actually gave a bit of a hint as to where they came from. He stated that the eggs themselves originally resided on Earth, and were likely blown in from somewhere else by the wind. So no, they aren't aliens. They come from Earth. So there's one question answered, to an extent. And while I'd like to answer the full question, as in what actually caused them to come into existence, I think that needs to wait. There are some other things that need to be discussed before we can give the full truth as to where they come from. So, we know they're from Earth, but we need to know why they came about. I mean, if we can figure out their purpose, then we'll likely be one step closer to finding the full answer. I say likely, but I wrote this script, so obviously I know it's going to happen. The show spends an insane amount of time trying to explain the purpose of the parasites. Why do they exist? Well, I can answer this pretty easily. You see, the main purpose of the parasites is simply to survive. Yeah, you heard me right, there's nothing more to it. The ending of the show seemed to imply that the parasites came about because of humans polluting the earth. I'm sorry to say this, but that's a load of malarkey. Seriously, there's no evidence to support this. Look at several of the parasites presented in the series. Migi, Ja, Reiko, and Hideo don't even seem to care all that much about eliminating humanity to save the Earth. They only care about preserving their identity. They don't want to be caught, and as long as they aren't put in any danger, they don't intend on killing anyone. A lot of the other parasites shown simply kill to eat or for fun. There's no serious malice at all. Even the first episode disproves this idea. The first non-Migi parasite we encounter is a dog who's eating another dog. The parasites only kill humans to eat, not because they're trying to purge the human race. The only person that seems to reiterate this idea is the mayor, Takeshi, who wasn't even a parasite. He was actually just a heavy environmentalist that pushed his beliefs onto others without any facts. He genuinely believed that the parasite's purpose was to destroy humanity. So no, Takeshi, you're incorrect. Maybe look for some facts before assuming things. You've noticed then that clearly the purpose of the parasites is nothing short of survival. Their existence is much like an insect, simply wanting to survive and continue the species. Heck, at the end of the series, most of the parasites begin to eat normal food instead of human meat, because that's the best way to survive. Killing people is likely to attract more attention, so the best option for survival is to seem exactly like any other human. So no, there's no extra purpose behind it, they're simply insects intending on surviving. The only exceptions being Migi and Reiko, who both sacrifice themselves for the survival of another. These two were affected by being connected to humans in some way, however, so their minds are a bit different. There is a reason why, after Miki combined with Shinichi's heart, that he suddenly began changing to become more human in his personality. By being connected to a human in some significant way, it's likely that these two began changing to become slightly more human, so that's why they're an exception to this. So now we're another step closer to understanding the parasites completely, but the question still remains. 
What exactly are they? Well, this is gonna sound a bit redundant, but they're parasites. Wow, discovery of the year! No, but seriously, this goes a lot farther than that. You see, now that we know that these beings come from Earth and that they're much like any other insect or animal, that narrows down things quite a bit. But duo, you say? There's no parasites on Earth that can do things like this. Nope, that's false. Get ready, because we're getting into some creepy territory. You see, there are several creatures on Earth that mimic behaviors similar to the parasites. Taking over limbs, for example? How about the Samotha exigua, or the tongue-eating lapse? This creature cuts off circulation from a fish's tongue, and then the tongue gets detached. It literally becomes the fish's tongue after this. Not exactly that far off from pretty much controlling an entire limb, huh? What about taking over the brain? Ophiocordyceps, or the obvious one that comes to mind, a fungus that controls ants' brains, forcing them to climb up a tree and kill itself so it can survive, but there are lots of creatures, and not all of them are a fungus that function in this way. Another such example is the Cystocephalus solidus, which goes through several stages before reproducing and starting the cycle over. You see, we have quite a large sum of parasites throughout the Earth, and several of them bear a fair amount of similarities to the parasites within the series. The ones in the series are likely just an evolved form of one of the many varieties of parasites on Earth. In fact, considering the translucionist design, it's likely that this variety originally came from the sea, much like our friend, the tongue-eating louse. Chances are, this variety evolved to be able to survive on land, and to survive, the worms took over the closest being in proximity, and the one that would give them the longest lifespan. While dogs may last a solid nine years, humans have the ability to survive for much longer, meaning they're the perfect species to take over. These parasites were not aliens. They were likely an evolved form of one of the many variants of parasites on Earth, one capable of hatching and surviving on land, and having the ability to control humans. Their only purpose is to survive, nothing more, nothing less. Any ideals of them coming to destroy humanity is nothing but a bunch of malarkey. The parasites have no values, and no meaning to their life beyond survival, as expected of a bunch of insects that have gained intelligence from humans. And while we've managed to solve several of the mysteries involving the origins and purpose of the parasites, there remains something a bit more frightening. These things aren't as unrealistic as you'd expect. Besides the skin morphing stuff, obviously. It's not completely impossible for some kind of parasite to come along and figure out how to control our brains. Not the brains of insects or fish, but real humans. Is it likely? No. But is it impossible? Could there potentially be a small worm right behind you waiting to tunnel into you and take over your brain? Just something to think about before bed. Have a nice night. But hey, this is just my crazy theory. Thank you for watching, I hope you enjoyed. And hey, if you like this video, why not give a like or comment whatever you feel like. And hey, I got other videos, you can check those out. Uh, I've been taking a while with this video because I've had a lot of crazy stuff to deal with, but hey, it's out now, and there's not much else to say besides, see you later.